Good morning, I'm Chloe Sutliff with Optimize for Life. And I'm Dr. Jay Sutliff. This month we've decided that we're going to combine our videos. Rather than having one separate video of Chloe doing her cooking demo and me doing a nutrition uh, education lecture, we're going to combine them and give you some real practical, applicable information you can apply to your life right away. We just came in from our morning exercise and we're really hungry, so I thought I would make some waffles and I want to walk you through that today. So Chloe's going to talk about refueling with a breakfast meal and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how your body operates. Now the interesting thing is, is we talk about breakfast when that really talks about breaking the fast. Now, I hear it time and time again that people aren't hungry at breakfast and that's most likely because the person was eating late at night and the digestive system was working through the night to digest the food that was eaten real late. Now if you, if you fine tune your body and you spread out your meals where you're not eating between meals and you're not eating just prior to going to bed, you're going to find that your digestion works better. See, as you sleep at night, your body has to make a decision between processing food or repairing the body. If you have a lot of food in your system, say you've eaten within three hours of going to bed, you're going to find that the digestive system is going to be working all night long. And it's interesting that when you lay down in a horizontal position, your body has a more difficult time to process the food because gravity helps feed the food through the system and digestion takes place. So what we're going to encourage you to do is stop eating any food at least three hours before excuse me, going to bed at night. And then what you're going to find is that you're going to wake up in the morning uh, wanting to eat. And so what we're going to explain to you here is that when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you want to do is, is start putting some fluids into your body so you start cleansing the body out. Now, the body's been uh, processing your blood, the liver's been cleaning your blood, filtering your blood, your digestive system's working. So the best thing to do is get up in the morning and start drinking some fluids. And that starts hydrating the system, starts pushing the system through. And most likely what's going to happen is going to probably uh, trigger some type of peristalsis in the stomach where, and in the digestive system, the colon. And you're going to want to release uh, your bowels. And so what we're going to find in the bladder wants to empty. So remember, we have toxic... Uh, chemicals that the kidneys are filtering out, the liver's filtering out. And so putting water in and helping cleanse the system, get those toxins out because the body's been filtering it all night. So then you, you do that, and then if you want to eat before you exercise, that's fine. We like to uh, do plenty of fluids and then go out and exercise and come back and refuel and get some good carbohydrates, get some uh, small amount of protein in there, maybe get some good fats, get a good start to the day, making sure we get plenty of fiber in there. And so really start fine-tuning your body where you stop eating late at night or even three hours before bedtime. Drink plenty of fluids when you get up in the morning. Get some exercise in. Get your body moving. Get your blood pumping. And then what we're going to do now is we're going to take it to the next step. And Chloe's going to go into uh, explaining how she makes the waffles. And then I'll intersperse that with uh, some nutrition information as we go along and talk about the different components that we're going to have in the waffles. We're going to be making oat waffles today, and when I make oat waffles, I like to use both kinds of oats. So I do kind of a half and half, half of the long cooking and half of the quick cooking. And we've got about a cup of each right here. We're going to put it into our dish. We're going to add a sweetener today. This is honey. You can use whatever kind you like. We're going to do about a quarter cup. We add a half a teaspoon of salt and a teaspoon of vanilla. To start this out, we're going to put in two cups of really hot water and we're just going to let our oats soak for a little bit in this, letting these flavors meld. Okay, next we're going to make our flax eggs. And what I've done is I've taken a quarter a cup of golden flaxseed and I like to use the golden because it's got a mellower taste. I put it in my bullet blender here and I ground it up into a fine powder. So what I'm going to do is add about a tablespoon of oil to this. We want to limit our amount of oil so we're just going to use a tablespoon today and we're going to use about three quarters of a cup of hot water. We just add that all together and what, once I get the lid on here, I kind of shake this around a little bit just to make sure that I've got all the flax from the bottom of the container. And I just put it on my blender and we're going to blend this into a nice foamy egg substitute. 
Okay, you can see how, how this mixture turned into this foamy, gelatinous mixture that's kind of an egg substitute. Of course, it doesn't have the rising power that eggs do, but you can see how, how it's gelatinous like an egg white would be. So we will pour this into our oat mixture. And just to rinse out my blender and get everything good, I take the rest of my cup of water and I just put it back in my bullet and just shake this around, cleaning out everything so we don't lose any of our flax eggs and it also starts cleaning out the blender for when we have to wash it up. At this point we're going to add a little more water to our mixture just to get our oats all nicely stirred up here. Now you can use uh, gluten-free oats in this recipe if you want to and that makes this a gluten-free recipe because what we're using today is a brown rice flour and if you when you need to add more um, to get this a uh, little more um, waffle iron ready this the consistency of a little more waffle iron ready um, you can add a little flour to it, and I'm using the brown rice flour today. But we're pretty thick today, so we won't have to add too much of our flour. So we're just going to sprinkle a little of the brown rice flour into this. Just to get it ready for our waffle iron. Now if you want to make this go a little farther, we could even add a little more water if we wanted to. And then we would add a little more brown rice flour, and we would have a mixture that goes a lot farther. Okay, so right now we're going to pour it into our waffle iron. We've got our timer set for nine minutes. We're going to be cooking this for nine minutes in this particular waffle iron. Every waffle iron has a little bit different heat setting, a little bit different temperature, and so you kind of have to experiment with your own waffle iron as to how long you really need to cook these waffles. But let me just show you how it works with this one today. You see our waffle iron is nice and hot. We spread it out a little bit. I like to make sure all the corners are filled in. Of course, when we close the lid, it'll spread it out a little bit too. Okay, we're going to close our waffle iron up, turn our timer on for nine minutes, and we'll show you the results when we're done. I figure while the waffles are cooking, I'm going to share a little nutrition information with you here. The thing I want to talk about right now is there's still a lot of talk about not eating carbohydrates. Well, it's interesting that carbohydrates are really essential for the body. Your brain runs on carbohydrates, your muscles run on carbohydrates, and a lot of times what we, we talk about is, is a low-carb diet or things like that. Carb, when you just say carbohydrates, it doesn't tell you what kind of foods you're really eating. It kind of throws all the food into one category. So obviously carbohydrates include all the fruits and vegetables, whole grains, legumes, nuts, seeds. All those foods have carbohydrates in them. But also Skittles and junk food and uh, syrupy things, uh, sodas, they have carbohydrates as well. So let's, let's, let's just get this clear right now that this waffle right here is going to be a high carbohydrate food. Now the interesting thing is, is that we're using whole foods. We're using the whole oats, okay? And so what we find, and then we put in some flax in there. What we're saying here is that we want to use the foods in their natural state as possible. And what we do, when we eat the whole carbohydrate, it slowly releases into the bloodstream as opposed to spiking the blood sugars. So if your brain and your muscles and things all need carbohydrates, what we're talking about is these complex carbohydrates 
that have the nutrients with them still, the fibers intact. And so when you technically look at it, fiber is a carbohydrate. So we make sure that we have plenty of fiber because we're not eating the processed foods. So when you eat the foods and then you have the fiber in there, we find that the fiber is basically broken into two major categories of soluble and insoluble fiber. Now the insoluble fiber is the husks and things like that on the outside of, of the grains and the, and the foods that kind of sweep out your system, get the toxins out, clean out your colon, change that microbiome in your system to clean out the old toxic sludge. And then the soluble fibers come into things like oats and beans and they're the ones that expand when fluids are added to them. And so what we find is that we have a nice balance between the insoluble, the sweeping, brushing kinds of fiber, and the soluble fiber, the kind that absorb toxins and waste products and bind it, and even cholesterol and uh, toxic substance and bile. It binds those things into like a sponge-like mass, takes them into the colon, and cleans it out of the system. And then also what we find is that it naturally lowers cholesterol in the system, it binds up toxic agents and takes them out, takes bile acids and takes them out, cleans out the colon. And so what we're saying here is a high heart carbohydrate breakfast is then also going to give us the energy that we need slowly over time. So the fiber slowly uh, digests and allows the glucose to go into the bloodstream in a, in a moderate manner rather than eating processed foods and donuts and, and quick things like even juices will in a sense spike the blood sugar because it goes into the bloodstream very quickly. So we're eating a high carbohydrate breakfast here because the body needs that and with all the fiber intact there what we're going to find is that we're going to have long-term energy from this breakfast. And so again we were fasting through the night we got up in the morning the liver and the kidneys have been filtering the blood and now what we're going to do is we're going to find that in the bile it's going to be thrown into the system and then we're going to find the fiber binding the bile, taking the toxins and the waste products out of the body, cleaning out the colon, okay, also getting, uh, in a sense, clearing up our minds. And then we've been drinking fluids this morning. We've been exercising, getting the blood going. And now we're going to eat the carbohydrates to replenish the body. Because when we exercise too, we have what we call glycogen, which is a stored carbohydrate in the muscles. Okay, we're going to replenish that for our next workout. But what we're going to find is that when we eat a, a, a meal like these waffles, and we're going to show you how to serve them, and we're going to put some fruit ice cream over the top of them in a couple minutes, what you're going to find is that when you eat foods like this, and you're going to eat the foods intact, and that the food's being slowly digested and enters into the bloodstream at a moderate pace, what you're going to find is you have long-term energy. You're not going to have to eat again for four, five, maybe even six hours. And so the body can digest. And just think about this. All the organs in the body go on a work-rest cycle. The heart, work, rest, work, rest. The kidneys, the lungs, and the digestive tract. We're going to let it work today. We're going to chew our food thoroughly. We're going to masticate it, let the system break it down. And then we're going to let it digest. And then we're going to let the system just kind of rest and absorb the nutrients. And then we're going to probably eat again another five hours. And so we don't need to be eating in between meals and putting food back in there because really let's let the system work, digest the food, break it down, and then eliminate it. And what we're going to find is that when you allow this to go on, when you're eating nutrient-dense, plant-rich foods, is you're going to take away all that toxic hunger that we talk about because you're craving nutrients. Okay? And so what we're going to find is we're going to keep the nutrients intact, the micronutrients, the, vitamin, the vitamins, the phytochemicals, the minerals, the antioxidants, they're going to fuel us and suddenly all that hunger that we call toxic hunger, you're always hungry, always hungry. We're not going to be spiking the blood sugars because we're going to have all the fibers intact. So we're going to stabilize our blood sugars. We're not going to be wanting to eat. We're going to be putting micronutrients into our diet and it's going to satisfy that hunger. So we're going to try to show you today as we top the waffles, as we get ready to serve them, how you can actually add more nutrients with your toppings and that we have a real satisfying meal here. So let's uh, break from my lecture. Let's get back to looking at what Chloe's cooking here with the waffles and we'll see how we can just bring this to a nice close and show you how you can get your day started. All right, we're ready to take our waffles out. Let me get my waffle iron open. All right, see they're nicely browned and done and we're just gonna put them out on our plate. See how nice they look? You turn them over on the other side, 
Both sides look wonderful. There we go. All right, now we're gonna to top them with the other toppings. All right, we're working on our topping now. We've been using frozen bananas. We peel and freeze them when they get really ripe. We've done some frozen mangoes, and we're gonna do some frozen cherries now. We just put them through our champion juicer. Now the cherries come out nice there. Some more in. Takes a little muscle to run this one. It's part of my morning workout. I'm going to put a little more banana in. ready for breakfast. And what we do at our house, and you can do whatever you like at yours, we use a little almond butter on our waffles. And then we take the fruit ice cream that we made. We get a little variety, maybe a little cherry on one, a little mango on the other, and we always use the banana just to make it extra sweet. We spread our fruit ice cream around. And maybe for just a little added color and texture, we'll sprinkle a little granola on the top. All right, we're ready to eat. Okay, now that we've had those great waffles with uh, that fruit ice cream on top, feeling energized again. My muscles are uh, soaking in those carbohydrates, storing it for the glycogen, the stored carbohydrates that I'm going to use to work out maybe later today and, and then tomorrow. And uh, as we summarize this day and as we look at what we've made, the breakfast and breaking the fast and digestion and how the pattern of eating each day, some other tips I want to just throw in there on the nutrition portion of this is that you want to make sure that you're chewing your food thoroughly. A lot of times when people start increasing the amount of fiber that they're eating, uh, they find that they maybe develop a little bit of digestive issues, maybe some gas and things like that. And so the thing I want to encourage you to do is chew your food thoroughly. Uh, the average person eats about 12 to 15 grams of fiber per day. And if you eat the, the way that we're prescribing for you, you're probably going to be up there in around at least 30 to maybe even 40 and so what we want to do is make sure that when we're increasing the fiber, we do it incrementally or slowly. And then also make sure that you're chewing your food very thoroughly. Okay, the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure that you're limiting your liquids. So the digestive juices are full strength in your stomach. And uh, you can masticate the food thoroughly in your mouth. Put some, uh, um, get some enzymes in there and, and some of your saliva mixes with the food. And don't wash the food down, just chew it thoroughly. And then you get more satisfaction than your, your taste buds and your, uh, your chewing mechanisms gives you more satisfaction. The more fiber you eat, you're going to have more stretch receptors uh, picking up on that in the stomach and you're going to have more satisfaction. And then eat to your satisfaction. There's, there's a saying in Okinawa, Japan, where they talk about harahachibu. And it, it's a little mantra they have and they say that before they eat. Harahachibu means basically eat till you're 80% full. So eat till you're satisfied, not till you're stuffed. Remember when they say all you can eat buffet, it's not a contest. And so a lot of times we take on that, uh, that mentality with our meals that we're trying to uh, get all we can out of every meal. But just eat till you're satisfied, chew and uh, chew and chew and limit the liquids. And again, right after you're done eating, you want to stay upright and kind of move around and kind of aid with the digestion. And then maybe start introducing fluids again about an hour or so after your meal. And then uh, just start sipping some water and, and taking in some fluid and, and drinking your fluids between the meals rather than with the meal. And then if you're eating with uh, plenty of fiber and you're satisfied and, and you're an active person, you're probably going to 
start getting hungry in about another four or five hours and then you prepare another meal and you eat and then you eat again with the whole foods and the, the fiber intact and then it satisfies you for another four to five hours. So we're not constantly eating between meals, interrupting the digestive process that's taking place. And you're going to have a clearer mind, you're going to have more energy, and uh, you're going to just going to have an overall better wellness. So that's how I summarize today, breaking the fast and throwing in a little digestive uh, advice in there. So hopefully that'll help you out as well. One. This recipe made four of these large waffle irons full of uh, waffles. And of course we could not eat them all, so we have some extras. And as soon as these cool down, I will put them in a Ziploc bag and save them for a later date. You can either freeze them or have them, say, tomorrow morning for breakfast by warming them up in the toaster oven. I hope this video has been a helpful video for you. On behalf of Jay and Chloe Sutliff and Optimize for Life, have a great day.